Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Hey Truck 10. This is where we answer your questions on AWS Cloud Migrations. I'm Cody, a cloud engineer, here to answer those questions. So Annie, what questions can you toss my way? Hey Truck 10, we've got a traditional IT team on staff. We know we'll need to skill up. Will Truck 10 help identify gaps? What types of training can we expect? Right, so when you're working with an AWS partner for a migration project and you're working through the Migration Acceleration Program, whatever partner you choose, you will go through a mobilize phase. As a part of this phase, you're gonna be designing a future state design document. Now in this document, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's gonna show you exactly what you will have up there in, in, in the cloud, exactly how it will be, the pricing, everything along these lines. But when you're making, when you're actually going through and making that document, your partner will be working with you and your team your engineers, everyone involved, and you'll actually most likely discover what others, uh, whatever those gaps are. And your partner can help you work through them. You can actually skill up your team and train in those whatever, whatever gaps there are, whatever uh, technological deficiencies there are. You can train them up in a very, very wide array of different uh, of sorts. Whatever you decide is best for your team to learn those skills. So that can be either like a workshop, direct one-on-one -on -one teachings with whoever your partner is, group sessions, however you want to go about it. For example, some common ones we do a lot are something more like a security boot camp or security best practices, if, if that's how you want to call it. Some sort of CICD training workshop, so continuous integration, continuous deployment, really popular for DevOps teams, and, and other things all along those sorts. So whatever they, whatever your partner helps you identify the skill gaps during this future state design document uh, design process, they'll definitely help you skill up and, and work through whatever those challenges are. So your partner can tailor your service and skill up your team on whatever is needed. Hey, Trick 10. What are some of the priorities and considerations we should be discussing as we're looking to modernize an existing app? Okay, so since this is most likely gonna be a mission critical piece of software, whatever you're using, something you wanna modernize, there's definitely some key items you want to have in the back of your mind, in the forefront of your mind when you're going about this whole uh, migration process. So first and foremost, you're going to want to identify what is the business case, what is the business need for modernizing this application and pushing it up to the cloud. So whatever the business needs out of this application, that's going to drive some of these decisions that are coming up here in the next few minutes. But definitely need to nail down what you want out of this application, how you want it to perform, what you're looking to get out of it. Now beyond that, some considerations to guide your, uh, your methods that you're gonna decide to pick on here is definitely when you're modernizing application, you're gonna want flexibility and scalability. That's one of the first and foremost things you wanna try to go for with this application or this modernization, whatever you're trying to do. So what, I'm, uh, what do I mean by flexibility? So when we're in the cloud, especially when we're in a modern architecture in the cloud, elasticity is gonna be very important. You wanna be able to surge up depending on demand, so scale up whatever your compute power is that you're using. If you're using lambdas, those are very easy to scale. They kind of scale on their own, actually, just depending on your event-driven architecture you're using. If you're using EC2 instances, you definitely want to be able to scale up, use some sort of auto-scaling group, have a load balancer, have all these things nice and ready and, and designed out and scoped out for whatever your application is and, and what it's using. Another thing that's important about scaling that some people teen, uh, tend to forget about is you want to be able to scale back down. If you scale up, all of a sudden you have a spike in demand, you go way, way out, you're gonna be paying for a lot of stuff. If you're not actually using that, uh, it's, it's not gonna be good at the end of the day. You're gonna wanna scale back down to be able to be in a nice smaller footprint on whatever the case of the demand is at that point in time. Also, when we're looking at modernization, we need to keep in mind resiliency. So AWS has a wide amount of regions. You can think of those as just geographical areas. Inside of each region, there's an availability zone. Think of that as like a single data center. Sometimes there's multiple data centers in one availability zone. So when we're looking at these, we want to design our application, since it is now going to be modernized, we want to design it to be either multi-region, multi-availability zone, something along these lines. Make sure it's resilient to any sort of catastrophe. If one data center goes down, do you want your whole entire application to be hosed? Most likely not. If it is an application that can be hosed and it's okay if it's down, then okay, sure. But if this is a mission critical piece of software, we're gonna wanna make sure this is running in multiple availability zones and or multiple regions. So that if one entire region goes down, you can still, your application's still up and running. Now there are considerations to do that sort of thing. We can dive into those perhaps at a later date, certain things like cost, how you wanna transfer traffic, everything along these lines. 
but definitely have that in your mind as a consideration when you're looking to modernize your application. One of the most important things to think about when you're going about modernizing an application is definitely security. Some of the times we've seen in the past from a legacy application, we're migrating that, modernizing it into the cloud, it's following some dated security practices. When we're up in the cloud, security can be handled slightly different than how it was on premise. There are some nice, nice features that we have in AWS that can really help you out. You can scope out data accesses through IAM, user accesses through IAM. You can lock down data through encryption. You can encrypt it in many, many different ways. You can encrypt it yourself before you upload it. You can let Amazon handle some key and they can rotate a key for encryption whenever you want. So definitely security, security needs to be on the top of your mind. So that's one thing you don't want to let go by the wayward. So far we have resiliency, we have scalability and security. Those are just some of the low hanging fruit things to keep in mind, in the forefront of your mind, back of your mind, everywhere in your mind, when you go about modernizing some mission critical or even non-mission critical piece of software. Hey, Check 10. Why does AWS work with migration partners? So for this question, I'm gonna pass over to our local expert. Uh, he's an account executive here at Check 10. Aaron, take it away. That's a great question. Um, I'd say, there's a lot of different reasons that AWS uh, invites partners into migration opportunities. One of the key uh, reasons AWS will bring a partner in is there's certain partners that have really invested that time and effort in becoming experts in the migration acceleration program, understanding the inner workings, the expectations, uh, the different you know timelines, all the things that customers could stress out about, but it would be great if someone else had already been through it thousands of times uh, and could just be their guide. So that's that's a huge reason that AWS brings partners in for migrations. There's plenty of others, uh, industry expertise, uh, technology expertise, and then just, just use case focus in general. Um, partners, they come in all shapes and sizes and can support you know a variety of different needs. So in a lot of cases, the, the matchmaking makes sense. Back to you. Thanks, Aaron. Annie, what do we have up next? Hey, Trick10. Why is cloud optimization important? So we get this one a lot. This is a super hot topic with a really long, complicated answer. Ready? Just save money. Done. We're done. No. So realistically, looking more into this, is you really can dive into this and get super, super complicated. But at the end of the day, what is cloud optimization? What's it do for you? Why do you care about it? So. Like I said, it all usually boils down to just saving you some money. But how? So optimizing for the cloud is similar, but different from optimizing for on-premise or for some other application or architecture. That might, might seem obvious, but uh, in actual practice, it does get a little complicated. But here are some tips or major things to look out for in terms of optimizing your usage in the cloud. Just, of course, save you some money, save you some engineering time, refocus your engineers where they're supposed to be. So. For example, easiest low-hanging fruit is just making sure you have the right sized EC2 instances. There's nothing worse than just kind of wasting money when you don't need to. So this is a problem that's also on-premise when you are forced to purchase a certain size server or whatever the situation is. When you're running an AWS, you don't have to do that. You can properly size and scope out the size of your EC2 instance or your VM for whatever your, whatever your workload is. So you don't need some giant, beefy, massive, buff server if you're just doing some simple, small workload. So you can size that down and save some money on not reserving if you're not gonna use some, some big, large instance. Another item of optimization you wanna be thinking about is a lot of the services that AWS offers, a lot of their purpose-built services will have two different modes of allocation or purchasing or whatever you wanna call it. So they'll have a provisioned mode, typically provision something, provision concurrency, provision capacity, provision throughput, and an on-demand or general purpose mode or something along these lines. It depends on the service. The name usually changes. Essentially, they're the same. So one big service that a lot of people like to use is, uh, is DynamoDB. This is a purpose-built uh, database. It's a key store uh, value or a key store. Uh, so when you're looking at that, they have two different modes. There is the on-demand mode and the provision capacity mode. 
if you're not optimized, you may be running on demand mode because it's easy, quick to do, whatever. Uh, that's a higher rate that you're paying for. So when you're optimizing your cloud usage, that's one example of if you can understand and know your usage, you can use the provisioned mode, provision capacity, and really save yourself a lot of money. So cloud optimization at the end of the day, is just there to save you money. Thanks for joining us. Keep on sending us questions. We'll keep on giving you answers. You want to learn more about Trek 10 and our migrations experts, everything along these lines? Check us out at our migrations homepage at trek10.com.